second part of this video, we'll take a look at the finishing process for our 3D printed Viewliner 2 baggage car. From the unboxing to see what you get from Shapeways to the finished product. And welcome to Model Railroading Made Simple. So if you've been following along in the first video, we built a 3D model of the Viewliner 2 baggage car on the computer and talked about the various manufacturers that might someday make this model and concluded it most likely won't be very soon. We also talked about the possible ways to make a limited run of these cars since there seems to be a fair amount of demand for them. Today's video will just be about the process of finishing the Shapeways printed model. For those of you just joining in, Shapeways is one of only a few 3D printing services. It tends to be very expensive, but provides a way to print larger objects that can't be printed on smaller home printers. The turnaround from when I submitted the geometry to when the package arrived was just over two weeks. It could be more or less depending on how busy they are. They usually quote a turnaround time of about a month, but it's typically less and of course you can pay more to have your order prioritized. Almost an oily feel to it, uh, to the touch. You can't paint that really, um, so we're going to have to prep it first. Shapeways recommends acetone to remove the residue which has a waxy consistency to it. For a shell this big, totally submerging it wasn't my preference and I was more than a little leery of acetone and plastic having seen it melt the ties on a number 7 turnout before. So I opted to use a toothbrush to wipe down the model and clean off the waxy residue. The ends were the area where I needed to spend the most time and take the most care. I used a flathead screwdriver to gently scrape away the smooth surfaces on the ends where the residue tended to build up the most. Don't forget to clean out the inside of the shell as well. I've also printed these add-on parts that are actually part of the trucks. Uh, it'll be a little bit easier to see uh, once they've been painted. Uh, it should be painted black. Now it's time to use some Model Master Gray Primer. This will give our finishing coat something to grab onto and help seal any light leaks. I actually went back and hit the inside with cheap matte black spray paint because I was seeing some light leaks still on the first model. After a little trial and error, the light leaks were sealed, at least for the most part. Okay, so after primering, I've just used a real small piece of real fine grit sandpaper to go in and just do some sanding, uh, especially on the ends and the doors, anywhere that uh, surfaces are still a little bit rough. After doing a final coat of primer on the interior, I went ahead and painted the car silver. I did about two coats and let it dry overnight. The next day, I sealed the paint with clear coat, not dull coat. Dull coat, dull coat, dull coat, dull coat, dull, 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 dull coat, dull, dull. <sighs> Next, it's time to install windows and window tinting. I use clear plastruck sheets cut a bit wider than the windows on the inside. Be as liberal here as you can because nothing looks worse than glue bleeding onto the visible parts of the window. Next, we will do a layer of window tint behind the clear plastic. I used E6000 for both steps as it won't eat either material, holds well, and sticks instantly. You can get the window tint at any auto supply store or online, and a single purchase can last a lifetime. Now we'll test fit the shell again before applying our couplers and get things nice and snug. Walther's trucks work well and make lighting the car a snap. These screws on the top of the truck make excellent attachment points for a wire. I use KD number no. 5 coupler boxes to lock everything in place. I drilled holes through the base and used screws I had on hand. No additional screws are needed to keep the shell firmly in place. This particular model I had not yet modified the yoke to fit the coupler box all the way through, so I used long shank couplers instead of number no. 5s. I also 3D printed the truck side frame detail, and that should be applied at this point. I chose to attach the detail part directly to the truck. On the prototype, the detail is mounted on the body. Now it's time for the decals. There isn't really anything special about how I applied them to the model. 
Since the surface has been clear coated, they should have no problem adhering to it. Once all the decals were in place, I finished off by painting the HEP receptacles on the ends. If you wanted to weather the underside or other parts of the car, now would be a suitable time before sealing everything with clear coat. I applied two more coats of clear coat for good measure. Then I cleaned the wheels for good electrical pickup before a final test. Before I finished this video, the next test car arrived. This time in Shapeway's more expensive material called Acura Extreme. Generally, I don't feel the extra hundred dollars is worth it, but we'll explore this in more detail in part three. For now, here are some additional thoughts on that print. These pieces are the new, I remodeled the uh, truck, truck parts. So uh, these have quite a bit more detail than the last one. This is based off the brass surf liner. Um, so those just need to be dipped in acetone and they'll be ready to go. Um, over here, uh, this is just another base. This is the versatile plastic. Uh, I just started to put primer on it. Um, and then, of course, this shell is, uh, I just actually started to put primer on, but I'll show you. This is actually their Acura Extreme is what they call it. It's not like a car, if you ask me. Um, and it comes basically ready to paint, even though I'm going to primer it anyway. This, is, this side is what it looks like without primer on it. And so my big issue with the Acura Extreme so far is that it lost most of the ribbing on the top. Um, so I'm going to figure out what happened there. And it's quite a bit more expensive than the, the high detail. Um, it also picked up a little bit of the, you can't really see it, but some of the polygon lines there. The ends, I will say, came out a lot cleaner because on the, the other shells this needed to be cleaned up a lot and this is basically a little, a little, a little bit there but it's basically smooth and ready to go. Um, I had to do a lot of scraping on the other one. I hope you've enjoyed this series on printing our own Viewliner baggage car. I'm hard at work on a baggage dorm car. Once the final baggage car prototype is good to go, I'll see if it's possible to produce a small run of cars for hopefully less than the $300 I paid for them through Shapeways. Or I'll just make them available through Shapeways or our direct digital download. We'll see you next time on Model Railroading Made Simple. It's not my fault. I can't say don't call it. 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 Don't call it.